Let's bring in the American Islamic Forum for Democracies, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Dr. Zudi, good to see you. Now, the entire Supreme Court, including the four liberal justices, did they prove Chris Cuomo, Cuomo was wrong? Absolutely. I mean, thank God for the uh, rational, cool heads at the Supreme Court uh, who looked at the executive order and, and ruled rationally and said, you know what, it's not only that the largest Muslim countries are not included, there are many minorities, Christians, Jews, atheists, and others in those countries who also have to be vetted. And it's about the region. It's about precedent where presidents from Jimmy Carter to President Obama have called on moratoriums on certain countries like Iran saying that we have to vet better. So this is all partisan uh, identity politics, and they're still trying to use it, but I think now already, as Howie Kurtz has mentioned, the narrative is shifting very quickly, and we're finally beginning to look at how do we vet better, what are extreme vetting procedures, and how does the commander-in-chief have the freedom to keep us safe from jihadists yeah. and Islamists who don't know race, but know a certain theopolitical ideology. Yeah, you've argued, doctor, that this is a jihadi ban, a terrorist ban, not a Muslim ban. I mean, the top Muslim countries by population show Indonesia, Pakistan, and India at the top of the list. They're not on the terror watch list for the six countries. So do you think that the appellate courts are getting too political? Absolutely. There's no doubt that any rational American that looked at the ruling of the court could only have made sense of the lower court ruling by, by looking at what President Trump said during the campaign on certain phrases here or there. But in his writings, and his executive order, when he looked at the advice of all of the best advisors that he has now, he wrote an executive order that makes sense, said nothing about Muslim, nothing about banning, and people coming from Europe, Liz, majority Christian countries, I hope the Islamists, the jihadists that are in Britain, that are in France, we don't let in. So it's not about labeling a country as being a Muslim ban. And I think most Americans are beginning to see that that was just a scam from the left to try to, again, uh, uh, you know, target President Trump for something he really wasn't doing. Yeah, it's a good point you make about, you know, watching for them coming through allies, uh, countries that are allies of us. Again, Sebastian Gorka getting back was talking about Indonesia and Egypt as being the number one Muslim and Arab countries. Again, they are not on the list, but here's the deal. I mean, it, it does, do you, what do you think the Supreme Court rules in the fall? I mean, this is a temporary pause so the administration can put in effective vetting processes into place for national security, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be important that the court rule in the fall in a way that clarifies what are those that have connections here and which ones don't already. We're starting to see direct nuclear families are allowed, remote families, cousins and others are not. The court needs to start to say, you know what, what is the, what is the freedom? And look, they'll probably look back at the 52 Immigration and Nationality Act where the courts ruled that the president at the time in the Cold War had a right to vet against communist uh, ideologues and others that were a threat during the Cold War. So yeah. today I hope in the fall when the Supreme Supreme Court rules, Liz, it then becomes a launching pad for the president to convene a commission on radical Islam, yeah. as he called for, that can begin to identify the ideologies that don't have rights to come into this country. Now, doctor, let's turn to the fight against ISIS in the Middle East. U.S.-backed forces have sh just shut down ISIS's final exit out of the terrorist de facto capital. That would be Raqqa in Syria. ISIS is now cornered. And now we have this, Iraqi forces that seize back the stronghold of ISIS leader al-Baghdadi. That's the al-Nuri Mosque. So, doctor, is this the end of ISIS, and could they be headed here? I mean, FBI director, former FBI director James Comey said the terrorist diaspora could be headed to the U.S. and more into Europe. It's like treating a cancer. Eventually, it will eventually uh, disappear and be decimated, but it will act out and make the patient sicker before it goes away, and that's what ISIS is. Uh, it has been calling in its own jihadi networks for acts to be committed, and that's why we saw Ramadan and this more, the bloodiest summer we've ever seen before. And uh, at the end of the day, make no mistake, they take losses as victories. It's recruitment tools. When you see Mosul was taken back, that destruction of the mosque, the images, et cetera, are used to recruit even more jihadis. So we need to not be complacent. I'm sure General Mattis, Secretary Mattis, is not doing that. But finally, we have a president that has allowed our Secretary of Defense to do what's necessary abroad in Syria and Iraq to decimate them and keep them on the run. But even if they disappear tomorrow, in six months to a year, they'll come up with another name, the caliphate, whatever they are, unless we Muslims start to counter the ideology and go on the offense within the House of Islam instead of constantly being on the defense in this whack-a-mole program. Thank you, Dr. Jasser. We love having you on. Come back soon.